Hi everyone! This is Professor M Dust Science and today we're going to talk about the displacement operator in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. The mathematical expression for the displacement operator involves the exponential function of the sum of the ladder operators of the quantum harmonic oscillator. So at first sight, it might appear a rather obscure operator, but we're going to learn today that it actually plays a crucial role in the study of coherent states. In particular, we will see that we can generate a coherent state by applying the displacement operator on the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator. It also plays a very important role in other areas, most notably quantum optics. And so with this in mind, today what we're going to do is explore the mathematical properties of this displacement operator. So let's go! The displacement operator is defined in the context of the quantum harmonic oscillator. So let's start with a quick refresher. The quantum harmonic oscillator is characterized by the Hamiltonian H that has the standard kinetic energy term and whose potential energy depends quadratically on the position operator. We can also write down this Hamiltonian in terms of ladder operators, or in terms of the number operator. We can also write the eigenvalue equation of the Hamiltonian of the quantum harmonic oscillator, where these are the eigenvalues and these are the eigenstates. The eigenvalues En are quantized and equal to h bar omega times n plus one half, where n must be a non-negative integer. The associated eigenstate n can be constructed by acting n times with the racing operator on the ground state. Finally, the ladder operators allow us to move between eigenstates. In particular, the lowering operator acts on eigenstate n to give a new term that is proportional to eigenstate n minus 1, so that it lowers the energy of the state by one quantum. And the racing operator acts on eigenstate n to give a new term proportional to eigenstate n plus 1, raising the energy of the state by one quantum. This was just a very quick refresher on the quantum harmonic oscillator, but you can follow the links in the description for a more in-depth discussion of these ideas. We're now ready to define the displacement operator. We define the displacement operator d by an amount alpha, as equal to the exponential of alpha a dagger minus alpha star a. In this expression, alpha is a complex scalar. At this point, the name displacement operator may appear somewhat arbitrary, but we'll discover later on in the video why this operator has this precise name. The plan for the rest of the video is pretty simple. First, we will go over a few properties of the displacement operator, including why it has this name. And second, we will explain how it is related to coherent states of the quantum harmonic oscillator. But before we do that, we will write the displacement operator in a slightly different form. Remember from the video on functions of operators that if we have two operators A and B, such that A commutes with the commutator of A and B, and B also commutes with the commutator of A and B, then we have that the exponential of A plus B is equal to the exponential of A times the exponential of B times the exponential of minus one half times the commutator of A and B. This is a special case of the baker campbell hausdorff formula, and again, if you want more details, we actually first introduced it in our video on functions of operators, so you can watch that. In our case, the ladder operators obey this commutation relation, and as their commutator is a scalar, then we immediately have that A commutes with the commutator of A and A dagger and a dagger also commutes with the same commutator. This means that the conditions under which this formula up here is valid apply in our case, and we can therefore write the displacement operator, which we originally defined as the exponential of a sum, as the exponential of the first term times the exponential of the second term times the exponential of minus one half times their commutator. If we focus on this commutator for a moment, we can write it down. 
And we can then simplify it by taking the scalars outside the commutator. This product here is simply the absolute value squared of alpha. And this commutator here is equal to minus one. So that we end up with the absolute value squared of alpha. Overall, this means that we can write the displacement operator as equal to the exponential of the rating operator, the exponential of the lowering operator, and this scalar exponential. The scalar exponential commutes with all other terms, so we can rewrite this expression in the conventional form, which includes the scalar exponential first. In general, both this original definition up here and this rewritten form down here will prove useful when working with the displacement operator. The first property I want to look at is that the displacement operator is unitary. To show this, we first need to consider the adjoint of the displacement operator. From the video on functions of operators, we know that the adjoint of an exponential function is equal to the exponential of the adjoint. And this is true because the exponential function is a real function. Using this, we can now pick this expression for the displacement operator and write the adjoint of the displacement operator as the exponential of the adjoint. Using a similar derivation to the one that we used just a moment ago, we can separate this expression into an exponential of the scalar alpha, multiplying an exponential of the lowering operator, and an exponential of the raising operator. Now, a question for you before we move on. Try to convince yourself that this expression is consistent with the adjoint of this expression with the three exponentials here. Okay, so moving on. With these results, we can evaluate the product of d with d dagger. Copying this expression for d, we get these three terms. And copying this expression for d dagger, we get these three terms. The two scalar exponentials cancel here and here. This term and this term combine to the identity. And this is true because the exponents commute, so we can combine them straight away. And then this term and this term also combine to the identity for the same reason. So overall, we get the identity operator. Using a similar approach, d dagger time d is also equal to the identity. Putting these together, we see that the adjoint of the displacement operator is equal to the inverse, so that the displacement operator is a unitary operator. The next property I want to consider is the displacement operator d of minus alpha. Using the definition of the displacement operator up here, we can write this out as the exponential of minus alpha a dagger plus alpha star a by simply replacing alphas by minus alphas. The next step is to change the order of the sum in the exponent, which we can do because addition of operators is commutative. Comparing this latest result with this expression up here for the adjoint operator, we see that they're the same. Overall, from the previous slide, we have that the d dagger alpha is equal to the inverse of d alpha. And from this slide, we have that it is also equal to d of minus alpha. This means that the inverse of a displacement by alpha is simply a displacement by minus alpha. The next relation I want to prove is that the product of two displacement operators, d alpha and d beta, is equal to a phase factor times another displacement operator, alpha plus beta. To prove this, we will start with a displacement operator of alpha plus beta. Writing out this operator, we get this very long exponential. We're now going to use the baker campbell hausdorff formula yet again. And in this case, this is the A operator and this is the B operator. So we get this exponential that depends on alpha, this exponential that depends on beta, and the exponential of the commutator. 
This is the displacement operator d alpha, and this here is the displacement operator d beta. For the commutator here, let's first copy it. The only non zero terms are those involving the cross commutator of A and A dagger, which are this one and this one. This is equal to minus one and this is equal to one. So we end up with alpha beta star minus alpha star beta. Using this result, we can write the displacement operator d alpha plus beta as equal to d alpha times d beta times this scalar exponential. And this confirms the result up here. It turns out that this property is the key to understanding the name displacement operator but more on that later. I now want to look at commutators. Let's start with the commutator of the lowering operator with the displacement operator. Using this form of the displacement operator, we can rewrite this expression to get this new commutator. We can then take out the scalar exponential, multiplying the commutator of the remaining terms. At this point, we remember the formula of the commutator of an operator with a product of two other operators, which is equal to these two terms, and which we proved in the video on commutator algebra. Using this formula, we get the scalar exponential, and then the first term, plus the second term. From the video on functions of operators, we know that any operator commutes with a function of itself. So this first commutator vanishes. And if you don't remember this result, it simply arises because the function of an operator is given by the power series of the function and any operator commutes with a power of itself. This second commutator is trickier and to evaluate it, we need another result from the video on functions of operators. If we have two operators A and B, such that A commutes with their commutator, and B also commutes with their commutator, then the commutator of A with a function f of B is equal to the commutator of A with B times the derivative of the function of B. In our case, A and B are the ladder operators, and we've already established earlier that they obey these two conditions because their commutator is equal to the scalar one. This means that we can use this result here straight away. Overall, we get the scalar exponential. Then we use the result we've just discussed where the function f in our case is the exponential function, giving first commutator of A with A dagger, times the derivative of the exponential, which is alpha times the exponential. And then we still have the final exponential of the lowering operator. This commutator is equal to one. And then combining the scalar exponential with these two exponentials here, we see that they are simply the displacement operator. So overall, the commutator of A with d alpha is equal to alpha d alpha. Similarly, we could calculate the commutator of a dagger with a displacement operator, and the result is alpha star d alpha. As a final property, before we move on to the relation to coherent states, I want to consider the unitary transformation of the ladder operators. If you need a refresher about unitary transformations, you can find the corresponding video linked in the description but the most important property is that they conserve the norm of quantum states, and as such are used to describe physical processes such as spatial transformations or time evolution. In our case, we consider d dagger alpha a d alpha. This is called the unitary transformation of a with respect to the displacement operator. To evaluate this expression, we start with the commutator up here, which I first copy down here. This commutator implies that a d alpha is equal to d alpha a plus alpha d alpha. Using this result, we can rewrite the unitary transformation as equal to d dagger alpha 
multiplying these two terms. And multiplying through, we get this first term and this second term where I move the scalar to the end. As the displacement operator is unitary, this here is the identity, and so is this. Overall, we get a plus alpha. Using a similar derivation, we would conclude that the unitary transformation of the rating operator is equal to a dagger plus alpha star. To finish, I want to explore the relation between the displacement operator and coherent states. For a full refresher about coherent states, you can find the corresponding video in the description. Coherent states are defined as the eigenstates of the lowering operator. The key result that I want to explore is that we can write a coherent state alpha as equal to the application of the displacement operator d alpha on the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator. To prove this result, we only need to consider the action of the lowering operator on the state formed by d alpha acting on the ground state. We again consider the commutator of A with d alpha up here, which we first copy down here. This commutator implies that A d alpha is equal to d alpha A plus alpha d alpha. Using this expression, we can rewrite the action of A on d alpha zero as equal to these two terms acting on the ground state. We can expand this into the term proportional to the lowering operator plus the term proportional to alpha. The lowering operator kills the ground state, so we end up with alpha multiplying d alpha acting on the ground state. We therefore see that A acting on this state gives the scalar alpha times the same state. And this confirms that d alpha zero is an eigenstate of the lowering operator with eigenvalue alpha, so that we can generate the coherent state alpha by the application of the displacement operator on the ground state as shown up here. In the video on coherent states, we define them as eigenstates of the lowering operator. This relation that we've just derived using the action of the displacement operator on the ground state is actually an alternative but equivalent definition for coherent states. What this means is that we could define a coherent state in terms of the displacement operator, and then the fact that coherent states are eigenstates of the lowering operator could be derived from it. And we're now finally ready to understand the origin of the name of the displacement operator. As we said earlier, we will use this relation describing the consecutive application of two displacement operators by amounts alpha and beta, which is equal to a phase factor times the displacement by alpha plus beta. Let's consider a coherent state alpha given by the displacement by alpha of the ground state. Let's now consider what happens when we apply the displacement operator d beta on this coherent state. We first get d beta times the coherent state in terms of d alpha and the ground state. Using this relation up here, we can rewrite this as this phase factor times the displacement operator d alpha plus beta acting on the ground state. And this here is simply the coherent state alpha plus beta. What does this mean? The application of the operator d beta on a coherent state alpha gives an irrelevant phase factor and then generates another coherent state that is displaced by beta compared to the original one. So this is the reason why we call this the displacement operator. These displacements may appear somewhat abstract and they are, so don't worry if it takes some time to gain the intuition about them. Just to give you an example of how abstract they are, in the context of quantum optics, they are displacements in the optical phase space. 
the displacement operator is central in our study of coherent states. To see an example of its use, I encourage you to take a look at the video on coherent states wave functions, in which the displacement operator is absolutely key to build these wave functions. I hope that you liked the video, and as always, please subscribe.